So remember, whatever you say is recorded. Can and will be used again. That's exactly right. All right. This is what we want to find today. We want to find the cosine of that says alpha plus beta. The fish is the Greek symbol alpha. Have you ever heard of the Greek symbol alpha? Yes, I think so. Where? Jesus is the alpha and the omega. Well, but what is after that? Alpha the Omega, the beginning, of the beginning the which means Alpha is the very first letter of the Greek alphabet. The second letter is A. How it looks like a B is Beta. Alpha and Beta. Alright? If we're going to find cosine of Alpha plus Beta, we need to know something about those angles. So I'm going to tell you Alpha is in quadrant three and the sign is negative three fifths. Beta is in quadrant two and the cosine of beta is negative three fourths. Do you have a formula for cosine of alpha plus beta? Yep. First thing I need to do is draw my triangles. See what I know, see what I need to know. Okay? You know how to draw triangles? Yep. Alpha is in quadrant three. What do I know about alpha? Negative. What's the opposite is negative three? What else do I know? And what else do I know? It's got a negative x. Which is what? Our old friend Pythagoras told us how to find that, didn't he? Or if you know what a Pythagorean triple is, you can find it. We don't know that 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple? Negative 4. Good. What do you do next? Everybody agree with that? Yes, sir. Theta is in quadrant 2. Now, when I draw these triangles, you notice I'm marking which one is alpha and which one is beta. What do I know about beta? What's my adjacent side? What else do I know? The other side is not five. It is round of seven. And it is positive because it is going up. All right? So, now that I have my triangles drawn, is the formula for cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine alpha, <coughs> cosine beta, minus sine alpha, Sine beta? Do you remember that or look it up or something? What's cosine of alpha? Maybe four fifths. What's cosine of beta? Alpha. 
right, so that one's four. So now I have my equation, right? Isn't this 12 over 20? Plus 3 radical 7 over 20? So the cosine of alpha plus beta is 12 plus 3 radical 7 over 20. Did you follow that? That wasn't awful, was it? Can we do another one? Some people are still writing. Let me give me a... My microphone is not working. Yes. Would you be able to think of the 12 and the 20 or the total of the terrible data staying as 12 and 20? No, because you can't pull it. Yeah. You can't pull it. Yeah. 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 Now it's working. Well, they're going to miss the sound on the first one, but oh well. You ready to do another one now? All right. This time, we're going to do a tangent one. We're going to do tangent of alpha minus beta. You all know this formula, right? Good. We know... The sine of alpha is 8 seventeenths, and I'm in quadrant 2. We also know that the cosine of beta is negative 9 over 41, and I'm in quadrant 3. All of that is given to you. Okay. I know you're thinking, how do I figure that out? It's all given. Okay, can I draw alpha? Yeah. This is alpha. What do I know? Yeah. Opposite? Opposite is eight. What's the adjacent? It's what? Negative fifteen because it's going left. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, you can you can get it right. All right. Beta is in quadrant three. What do I know about beta? It's in quadrant three. Well, yeah, but what do I? What else do I know? That it is also beta. What's negative nine? Adjacent is negative nine. Hypotenuse is forty-one. Is it negative 40? Yeah. Okay. So, tangent of alpha minus beta. Isn't that tan alpha minus tan beta over 1 plus tan alpha tan beta? Right? What is 
Fish Tan Alpha. I think it's negative 815, isn't it? Minus, what's tan beta? Uh, 40 over 9. Do you agree? 40 over 9? All over 1 plus negative 815 times 40 over 9? Do you have it written on your paper just like I have it on the board? Yes. Then I want you to put it in your calculator exactly as it is right there. Exactly. Make sure you all can all do this. No, I want it just like it is. Where it's two fractions. Yeah, they get two fractions. It is a big fraction, but it's going to make you learn how to do it properly so that we always get the right answer. Whoa. Yours is not like that on the board. I want two fractions. Two fractions. A fraction on top, a fraction on bottom. Nope. I want two fractions. I want it just like that. If you don't do it as two fractions, you have to put so many parentheses, you'll confuse yourself. There you go, that's how you want you put fractions just like that. Are we okay? Now, the last thing we're going to do is an identity. Mm -hmm. 
the last thing we're going to do is an identity. You remember doing identities? If I have sine of x plus y plus sine of x minus y equals 2 sine x cosine y. All right. Are we doing sum and difference identities? Isn't that, isn't that what we're doing? Yes. No, we're not using that doing double angle. We have all. If if we haven't gone over them, you can't use them. All right. We are doing sum and difference. Isn't that what we've been doing? So I'm going to have to use sum and difference in order to solve these. I can only work one side, same rule. But is this an identity? Yes. Is this an identity? Yes. So that's what I'm going to use. Is it sine of x plus y? Sine x cosine y plus cosine y sine x. Is it? No. It's not. Then you just no, I did it backwards, didn't I? Access and cosine y again. Yes, I did. My fault. Plus, how about sine y cosine x? Yes. There we go. Plus, what is this one? Sine x cosine y minus. Minus. Sine y cosine x? Right? Look what happens. They subtract out. This and this is gone. Do I have two just like? Yeah. So do I have two sine x cosine y equals two sine x? Cosine y? Why are you saying they equal each other? Isn't that what we're trying to do is prove they equal each other? Yeah. Isn't that what an identity does? And guys, if you do not put this last step, guess what? It's wrong. You have to tell me they're equal. You can't tell me. Some of you are saying that you're leaving the last step as like, 1 over cosine squared equals secant squared. It does, but you have to, the last step has to say exactly the same thing on both sides of the equal. Does that make sense? Can we do this?